Hello, welcome to today's video. We are on page 130 of the Keyboard Musicianship Book 1. And here in 130, we have Changing the Keyboard Texture. Okay, so the name of this tune here is called The Jolly Miller. It is an old English ballad. And as you can see, we're being brought to a 6-8 time. Now, when we have music like this at 6-8 time, uh, we want to think about it in two. And the reason why we want to think about it in two is because, well, when we have the single unit of a 6-8 time, we think about the dotted quarter note. The dotted quarter note has three eighth notes in it. And if we subdivide all three of those eighth notes, so here's an example. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so as you can hear, a little bit of a fast tempo there. However, when we think about the dotted quarter note, think about it in two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. One, two. And you want to think about it in two like that because of how fast the music is going to be. When we have the Jolly Miller, it's gonna be a little bit faster than we would usually think. So let's go ahead and listen to what this one sounds like. Here we go. One, two. So as you can hear, quite fast. If we were to think about it as just eighth notes, it would be that fast. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And so that's a lot of counting. So we want to make it easier so we don't have to count so much. In other words, when we count, we want to just think about it in two. One, two. One, two. One. Two, one, two, one, two. And so you have to feel the subdivisions of each of those single units within one and two. And of course, when you start practicing this, of course, you may want to start with hearing the subdivisions. Let's go ahead and talk about the Jolly Miller. Let's start with the left hand first, okay? This is a very unusual piece because it has harmonies in the right hand. And the right hand, as you can see, does also have legato. So we are going to have to think about this in terms of voices, which one is going to have the legato and which one is not. Okay, so let's start with the left hand first. Two, three, one, two, three. As you can see, here are the single units that I was talking about. Next, uh, the left hand is going to be non legato. One, two, three, one, two, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Being very clear about whether there's going to be two beats within a quarter note, one with the eighth, or just a single eighth rest. Okay, be very clear when that is lifted. Let's go with the right hand now. I want you to start off by looking at the notes individually. Let's start with the note that's on top. If there's just a single note, notice that the stem either is pointing down or up. We'll just work on single notes, if it's just a single note or if it's just the top note. So as you can see here, we have E, A, A, G sharp, lift. E, C, C, B, lift. D, C. Oh my goodness, whoa, what is this? It says here that we have a C with finger number four. Now, this is very strange the way the fingering has been issued out because it's asking that C 
C5 here, B played with finger number four, but also the A right afterwards, B also played with finger number four, but that's, how is that possible when there's a slur here and there are no pedal indications? I don't want us to use pedal for this. So we are going to have to adjust the fingerings here. Now, before you start adjusting the fingerings, you have to keep in mind that there are some harmony notes also involved. So we have this one and four on C and E, a six. And so what we can do is instead of playing four, we can play two, and then that will bring us to one and four again for B and D, and then two again right there, and then one and three for C and A. Now you can also play one and three as well. So we have five, four, two, two, three, but then you would have to switch because we need to move just like that, okay? Five, four, three, four, three, four. Oh, hey, I like that idea better. Let's try that one out. Five, four, three, four, three, four. Much better. Let's go ahead then, take our pencil, and we're going to, instead of having four on those interior notes of A and G sharp, we're gonna put it with three. And that means the top notes there of D and B will be four, and C and A will also be four, okay? That will also allow us to pretty much do the same thing for the second system, which it appears that the second system is an exact repetition of the first one. So if you want that as a reminder, go ahead and write in your fingerings. We have two, five, four, one, five, Oh, actually, let's go ahead and try that again. Two, five, five, four. And then this one will be a jump because. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and change this out here. We have five, four, and one. Three, four, three, three, four. There it is. If you want to go ahead and write in the left hand fingerings as well, perfectly fine to do that. We want to make this two. Let's make sure that we have the first E on measure number three. If we have two E's in measure number three, make them both with finger number two. And you're going to make A, finger number five, three on D, two E's with finger number two. Okay? So as we fix that, let's go ahead now and just focus on the top note once again. So two, five, five, four, jump. One, five, five, four, jump. Five, four, three, four, three, four. Allows for the very nice legato of that top note. As for the left hand, well, excuse me, not the left hand, but the bottom note, two, one, So not very uh, legato because there are gonna be lifts. You're not always playing a bottom note for most of this. So it's gonna sound kind of non-legato or choppy. When you have worked on each note, one at a time, within the right hand, playing the correct fingering. And if you need to write fingerings for the, the bottom note, please do so. It's mostly gonna be one though. So there's not much we can do about that. Okay, so here we go. Let's put both hands together now. So you may notice that there are going to be a couple of repeated legatos. Keep those in mind, okay? And then we also have those other notes that are either going to be jumps or just regular legato. Once we practice that individually, one hand or one note at a time, then one hand at a time, let's now put it with both hands together. And this is what it's going to sound like. Okay, so 
try your best to do that, making sure that, of course, the right hand is going to be louder. Now we're gonna talk about something else too, but just not today. Usually when we have harmony notes like this, uh, we don't want the, uh, the top note to be any, we don't want the bottom note to be just as loud as the right, the top note. Because usually when we have harmony notes like this, we are gonna eventually start talking about why uh, while playing a harmony note in one hand and a melody note in the same hand, we're going to want to play the top note or the melody note louder than the bottom one. Kind of sounds confusing, very difficult to achieve, but that is something that pianists do as well. Okay, so after practicing those first two systems, go ahead then, let's go ahead to the third system. Left hand is just regular dotted, chord, dotted half notes. One, two, three non-legato. Okay, so those are pretty simple. And as you can see for the right hand, we have two voices again. The melody is now for four measures. Let's practice just the right top note. Okay, here we go. Keeping your bottom note ghosted while playing these notes, because we remember we don't have access to all the fingerings when there are two notes being played. see what that is. Okay, so did you see that? We had lots of repeated legatos here. Three, five, four, two, five, four, five, four. Okay, getting ready here. We do have three notes being played. When that's comfortable, go ahead and play just the bottom note. Three, Two, three, then we have two, tie it over, bring down D. Okay? It's important that you practice each note or each voice individually so that it is perfectly comfortable within the hand. Then go ahead and put them both together. You don't have to legato the bottom note, just the top note. right and then when you're ready go ahead and put them both together okay. make sure that switches to five and then we're going back or we're going to the bottom system it's kind of similar to the top except now the rhythm is a little bit different notice that we do have a dotted eighth sixteenth eighth rhythm and the way that's going to be clapped let's go ahead and start from the pickup six one two three four a uh, six four five a uh, six is the way you, you're going to be counting that four five a uh, six it's supposed to be and but i like to say a uh, five and then we have one two three four five six one two uh, three four five six one two three four five five because there's a pick all right, let's go ahead and play just the top note once again. Let's make sure that all the fingerings are good. Here we go. Just the top note, trying to make sure it is legato when it's supposed to be. Sorry. Jump. Jump. Well, let me take a look at that one. We have five, four, three, two. You have to squeeze in to bring down five. Five. Sure that's comfortable. Five, 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 sorry, two, five, five, four, three, two, five, five, four, jump, five, four, three, two, five, three, five. Notice that I was ghosting the bottom harmony note. Now let's go ahead and just play the bottom note here. One, two, 
rest. Or in one, two, three. 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 One, sorry, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So making sure that it is always supposed to be the right rhythm, it is always going to be finger number one, though. Okay? So now that we've practiced one voice at a time, let's go ahead and put both hands together. Or excuse me, both voices together. Now we're doing two voices. And pick up A. to snake your way down. It's very actually kind of cool because you can use the bottom note as a sort of anchor as you shift down to the next hand position, okay? Practicing that one uh, voice and then one or both voices at a time. And then of course the left hand is the same as the top two systems. Let's go ahead and put both hands together now. So as you can see, it is going to be kind of tricky to maintain the legato with only the top note. Whereas the bottom note sometimes will be uh, non-legato, sometimes it will just be nothing. Uh, consider it, I guess, as a rest, but although there is no rest. So let's go ahead and practice that once again, both one hand at a time, and then put both hands together when it is comfortable. And we will see you at next lesson.